Amen. Let's just remain standing for a couple minutes here. Um, we're going to pray for this city. God wants us to. Amen. And pray for the churches and the pastors. Amen. This is Pastor Appreciation Month, and God wants us to honor the pastors in the city. Is it okay if we do that? And honor the leadership of FCF. We pray for them every day, nearly. We pray those Ephesian prayers. Um, amen. And that's a good thing to do. Those are the primary prayers we're to be praying over one another. Amen? Amen. Just pray those prayers. Declare the blessing. Apply the blood. Amen? That way you won't get over into witchcraft. Can you say amen to that? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up all the churches and all the pastors in this city and this region. And we thank you for them. We thank you for their service. Hallelujah. In your kingdom, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for their sacrifices. We thank you for their hearts, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for their gifts, their callings, their graces that you have bestowed upon them in the name of Jesus. And today we take the opportunity, Father, to honor them and to declare your blessing over them in the name of Jesus. And we surround them with our faith, with our prayers, and with our love in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for the mighty harvest of souls that are about to be unleashed to flow into your kingdom in the name of Jesus. And we in this church receive our portion in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. We praise you for it. We bless you for it. And, Father, we honor and bless the leadership of FCF. In the name of Jesus, we honor Dr. Pat Harrison. We honor uh, Cookie and Fred Brothers. How do, we honor Ernie and Kathy Beers. We honor Pastor Lonnie and Linda Hilton. We honor, Father, every FCF pastor and minister, including those who are on the mission field. We honor them this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you for their sacrifices, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Amen. amen. I say amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, Liberty Worship Team. Give, that, give them a hand clap, please, as they come down off the platform. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. We pray those Ephesian prayers and the prayer from Colossians every Tuesday and Thursday morning over this congregation and over the leadership of FCF. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. I said, isn't that wonderful? So you aren't without prayer around here. And we plead the blood over you, and we declare the blessing over you. We declare the word over you. The word, that is, that is God's word. <laughs> amen? Over you. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Praise God. Now, yesterday, let me back up. Write this down. How many of you are ready for a swift and sudden turnaround in your life? In your situation. The Lord has given me a message that's going to inspire you and build your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. To receive your breakthrough. We're going to talk about how to have a swift and sudden turnaround in your situation. Now, I came down here to the church yesterday morning. Got down there all oh, between 10, 3, and 11. And, and I prayed in the Holy Ghost for... I don't know, almost three hours. And just wasn't really flowing. You know? And so I thought, well, I'll just preach on faith this morning. I can always preach on faith, you know. Amen? The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. Amen? If it's not a faith, it's sin. So we need to live and walk by faith, don't we? So I thought, I'll just preach on faith. So I jotted down a few faith scriptures, you know, to preach on this morning. And... Um, and then long about, I don't know, 2 o'clock, I, I went home. I'm going to tell off of myself, I watched a football game. Okay. I watched a football game. Praise the Lord. Me and my son watch Illinois football every Saturday together. He's in Phoenix. I'm in Mattoon. But we text back and forth after a touchdown has been scored or if they aren't playing well, we'll text, you know, say, well, it's over, you know. But guess what? Illinois won yesterday. And they're having a really good season. They're seven and one. Wow, that's awesome. 
Miracles never cease to exist, praise God. I didn't wear my orange today either, did I? But I got blue on. And uh, so came back down there about 6 o'clock yesterday and uh, sat down at my desk getting ready to, you know, write out my sermon notes and, and prepare my outline, you know, for today's uh, service. I'm going to preach on faith. You got that? I'm going to preach on faith. And uh, it just wasn't flowing. Something didn't feel right down here, Rosha. It just didn't feel right. Kind of like, you know, Brother Hagin said, it's kind of like taking a shower with your socks on. Something doesn't quite feel right. You, 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 you follow me? So it just didn't quite feel right. I thought, Lord, what is it? Because I don't want to, what is it? So I, I, I got it from where I was sitting there at my desk and walked around my desk, just started praying in the Holy Ghost. Not very loud, just, just praying quietly in the Holy Spirit. And uh, hadn't prayed for just a few minutes' time. Just a few minutes' time. And all of a sudden, here he comes. The Holy Spirit came into the room. I felt his presence. I knew he was there. And I said, what is it? What is it? He said, he spoke these words to, to me. He said, 2023 shall surely be the year that my children shall go free. He spoke that to me almost audibly. And then he said this. He said, he said tell the people that their best days lie ahead. He said, tell them restoration is coming. Restoration is coming to you, to your household, to your health, to your finances. Can you say amen to that? Amen. To this nation. Woo! Oh, yeah, he's not through with this nation. Amen. So he's not through with this nation. Amen. So within just a few minutes' time, the Holy Spirit downloaded a prophetic message in my spirit. Something I didn't really study. Now, I knew the scripture, but I didn't really study this out. But it came upon me. It was downloaded into my spirit, man, supernaturally by the Holy Spirit. And so all I'm going to do is just be, I'm, I'm like the mailman. I'm not God. He's God. I'm just the delivery boy. I'm just the mailman. Huh? I said, I'm just the mailman. Amen. And so we're going to talk to you about that this morning. And uh, so turn in your Bibles to the book of James, the fifth chapter. James, the fifth chapter. Praise the Lord. James, the fifth chapter. And uh, let's begin reading. In verse 1, it says, Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Now, let's stop right there. Vital important um, to know who James is talking to here. Now, this letter, of course, is written to the church. But here, he's not addressing the church. He's addressing, how many of you know that the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And he add no sorrow with it. And the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he, it is he who giveth thee the power to get wealth. He giveth us the power to get wealth. He's not against us being rich. He's against forgetting about God when you get rich. See, he's addressing here the rich who got rich without God. They weren't, they weren't getting rich because of the blessing of the Lord. They're getting rich because they forgot all about God. And it says in verse 2, your riches are corrupted. See, there was corruption. And you know, there's, there's corruption right now in this land. There's, there's great corruption. Well, guess what? That's all about to be exposed. God's about to turn some things around. Say, say, God's about to turn some things around. Say, I will not quit. I cannot be defeated. 
I'm not going down because God's about to turn some things around. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver is cankered and the rest of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Talking about the, the corruption and, and, and the rich who are corrupted, you know, by, by greed and by power and all that. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. You see that in your Bible? How many believe we're in the last days now? These are the last days. These are the end times. How many of you are rapture ready? Better be rapture ready. <laughs> Amen. We'll start having rapture practices around here to make sure you're rapture ready. Amen. Everybody go, woo! Go, woo! That's how it's going to be. We're going to go, woo! <laughs> Amen. Just grab a sinner on your way up and say, you want to get saved or shall I let go? Right. Amen. I mean, grab one each hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. Your loved ones are about to come in. Amen. I said your loved ones are about to come in. Amen. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. Amen. Now, hold your place there. Hold your place there and, and go to... Proverbs chapter 13. Just hold, we're going to come back in just a minute. Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. And look at verse 22. It says, a good man, that would include women too, talking about the, the gender or the species of man, not the gender man. A, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for who? The just. the just. Well, that's you, isn't it? Yes. See, it's not wrong to be rich. It's wrong to get rich without God. Yes. It's wrong to get rich and then forget about God. That's why while God's blessing you, you keep tithing, you keep coming to church, you keep serving, you stay full of joy, you keep a humble heart before God. Amen. And you acknowledge that your wealth is coming from him. For it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth. Now go back to James. Verse 4 now. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which of you is kept back by what? By fraud. Say fraud. Say fraud. fraud. Crieth. See, this fraud is crying out right now, that all this fraud. All this corruption is crying out. James, see, James here is speaking prophetically. How many of you know that Jesus spoke prophetically at times, didn't he? Yes. Amen. Um, Paul spoke prophetically at times. Peter spoke prophetically. James here is speaking prophetically. Amen. Joel spoke prophetically. Amen. Isaiah spoke prophet prophetically. As a matter of fact, when Jesus came to the earth the, the, the first time, was born in a manger, went to the cross, died, shed his blood, was raised from the dead on the third day, Isaiah prophesied that event, those events. Yeah. Amen. He was, a, he was a prophet. Well, James here is speaking prophetically. Something that's going to happen before the rapture. Say before the rapture. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which of you is kept back by fraud. See, this fraud's holding back some things. This fraud that has happened and is happening. Crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Not Sabbath, but Sabaoth. Say Sabaoth. Now, that word Sabaoth is a very interesting word. Okay? The Greek and Hebrew word there for Sabaoth in verse 4 denotes military. Say military. Military or warfare. Now, now certainly, Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. Amen. He's called 
um, the Lamb of God. You know, he's also called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. There is also that side of him. So James here is, is saying that uh, the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of war. Say the Lord of war. What is he saying? He's saying this, that before the coming of the Lord, before the catching away of the church, Jesus, the champion of our salvation, is going to declare war on the fraud, declare war on the corruption that's in the earth. Hallelujah. He's already done it. Things are starting to turn. There's a shift coming. Ooh, I like something that I heard just the other day. I, it, I got a witness on it in my spirit. I believe it came right out of the Holy Ghost. November the 6th. That's next Sunday. We're going to turn our clocks back. November the 8th. We're going to take our country back. Can you say amen to that? It's turning. Say it's turning. Say things are turning in my favor. Say God's not forgotten about me. I'm not going to be moved by what I see or by what I feel. I'm only moved by what I believe. And what I believe is the word of God. Now look at verse 7. We're still in James 5th chapter. Look at verse 7. He's still speaking prophetically here. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth, say he waiteth, for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Say early and latter rain. That's what we're about to enter into in these next few moments before the coming of the Lord, for the catching away of the church. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful, and of tender mercy. Amen. Job ended up with twice what he had before the devil attacked him. How many of you have been attacked by the devil this year? Yeah. I bet I fought more demons this month than I have all year. But guess what? I'm still standing. Yeah. Amen. I'm still standing in his victory. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Well, guess what? You're about to end up with twice what you had before the devil launched his attack on you. Amen. You're going to see it in the Word of God. Go, go to the book of Joel. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Amen. Go to the book of Joel. It's in the Old Testament. Not Joel, but Joel. It's uh, right before Amos. And right after Hosea. Okay, Joel uh, chapter 2. This is what was downloaded in my spirit in just a few minutes' time. I was not studying this. That this came supernaturally by the Holy Spirit into my reborn spirit. Joel chapter 2, verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify fast. Fasting is a good thing. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. We do that on Saturdays twice a month and every Tuesday and Thursday morning we gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. We do that. Assemble the elders. We do that. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. That's the intercessory prayer there. Let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. How many have felt ruled over at times? By the heathen. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? He's still here. He's still on the throne. And he's not left you all alone. Amen. Then, say then. Yes. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer. 
and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied. Say satisfied. satisfied. Therewith. And I will no more make your reproach among the heathen. Say restoration. restoration. Is coming. Say that. Say my, mes- my best days. Lie ahead. So I'm about to enter into a mighty breakthrough, a swift and sudden turnaround in my situation. Now look at 20, verse 21. <coughs> Fear not, O land, be glad, and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. This is what James saw in the Spirit. In chapter 5, this is what we just read about in James, the fifth chapter. He saw this in the Spirit. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty. Say, I shall eat in plenty. Do you see any lack in that scripture? Do you see any, any poverty in that scripture? Pray, you, you shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people, say my people, my people people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people, say my people, shall never be ashamed. That means disappointed. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now. (laughs) <laughs> go to the book of Haggai. Go to the book of Haggai. It's in the Old Testament. And go to chapter 2. I'll get there here. My page is still turning. I'm getting close. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I got an older Bible, so I got to be careful because pages fall out. Okay, Haggai chapter 2. All right. And uh, verse 4 says, Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel. What a name. What a name, saith the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land. Say, be strong, saith the Lord. And work, for I am with you. Say, he's with me. He's with me. Turn, turn your neighbor and say, he's with you. you. Say, the Lord of hosts, according to the word which I, that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. You don't be in fear about anything that's happening around you or in this nation. Can you, can you say amen to that? Amen. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once... It is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations. We're seeing a shaking right now. And the desire of all nations shall come. That's Jesus. He's about to come. And I will fill this house. Say, he will fill my house. house. With glory. Say, with glory. glory. Say it, the Lord of hosts. Now, Now, notice here. Verse 8, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. He's talking there about money, about wealth. He's not talking there about a, a cloud. People always spiritualize the Bible. The harvest has to do with souls, certainly. Also has to do with your finances. We leave that out oftentimes because of religion and tradition. Has to do with your finances, being restored. Can you say amen to that? The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. So, 
your latter days are going to be better than your former days. The latter days of this church will be greater, far greater than our former days. I declare that. I decree that in the name of Jesus. I declare I decree that 2023 is your year, the year that you shall surely go free because God spoke it to my spirit man. Hallelujah. hallelujah. said, hallelujah. hallelujah. When he came into my office while I was praying yesterday, after watching a football game, can you believe that? Hallelujah. I said, can you believe that? See, here, look, see, God's not religious. We get so religious sometimes, don't we? We shouldn't, though. I said, we shouldn't, though. Amen. Enjoy your salvation. Enjoy your fellowship with God. Don't get stiff and starchy and religious. It's so easy to do. Stay full of joy. Stay full of life. Stay, stay full of love for people. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now, I'm going to read... Uh, Verses uh, 18 and 19. Praise God. Well, let's read verse 18 and 19 in the King James first. We're still in Haggai chapter 2. It says, Consider now from this day and upward, from the fourth and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Verse 19, Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth. From this day, say from this day. From this day forward, I will bless you. Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now, let me read that to you from the New Living Translation. I'm going to read that first. But I thought, no, let's read the King James first. It's just uh, really, really clear here in the <coughs> New Living Translation. On the 18th day of December, that's coming right up, that's coming right up, the day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, carefully consider this, I'm giving you a promise now. Say, he's giving me a promise now. While the seed is still in the barn. How many of you sowed this morning? While the seed is still in the barn. Say, while well, the seed is still in the barn. Before you have harvested your grain, and before the grapevine and the fig tree, the pomegranate and the olive tree have produced their crops, from this day onward, I will bless you. Hallelujah. That means your harvest is about to come up. Now make sure you're tithing and giving so you have some seed that, that can produce for you. Amen. I say amen. amen. I know most of you here, not all of you here, are tithers, and, and I thank God for that. I thank God for that. I thank God for that because you got a harvest coming. I said you got a harvest coming. Now let's go to the book of Acts where Peter preached about this. Say Peter. See, see Peter um, was very uh, prophetic. How many know that the Bible is a prophetic book? The Bible is a prophetic book. Okay, Acts chapter 3, uh, verse 19 says, Repent ye, this is Peter preaching, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, he shall send Jesus Christ, which was preached unto you. Verse 21 whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution. That word restitution there means restoration. Say restoration. restoration. Of all things. Say of all things. Oh. Which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Now, let's read those that same portion of scripture there uh, in the... Uh, New Living Translation. Let, let me find it there. I lost my place. My book marker fell out. So let me find it here. Okay, here we go. Now turn from your sins and turn to God. 
so you can be cleansed of your sins. Then wonderful times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. And he will send Jesus, your Messiah, to you again. Say, he's coming again. For he must remain in heaven. Now listen. Until the time of the final restoration, which we're about to enter into, of all things, as God promised long ago through his prophets. Can you say amen to that? What are we saying this morning? We're saying the devil can't keep your stuff any longer. The devil can't hold back the harvest that belongs to you from the seed you've sown, the gifts you've given, the tithe that you brought to the Lord. He cannot hold back your stuff any longer. Amen. He has to turn it loose. He has to turn loose of everything that he's stolen from you. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now go quickly because we're running out of time here. Go to Proverbs chapter uh, 6. Proverbs chapter 6. And uh, verse 30. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he's hungry. But if he be found, say if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. That is about to take place in your life. Can you say amen to that? So I've got a question for you. How many of you are ready for a swift and sudden turnaround in your situation? Raise your hand. Now, according to Jesus' own words, you can have a swift and sudden turnaround in your situation. Doesn't have to take very long. Go to, go to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Verse 1. Jesus spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me, mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Verse 7, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Say speedily. That's a swift and sudden turnaround. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So, take these scriptures you heard this morning. Take this prophetic message. Amen. And grab hold of it. Lay hold of it with your faith. And don't let go of it until everything that belongs to you is being fulfilled in your life. Can you say amen to that? Last scripture. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And our musicians will come and they'll sing another song and we'll be dismissed. And Y'all can go downstairs and eat and we're going to honor the birthday people and the anniversary people first. You get to be the first in line. Praise God. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 6. And verse 12 says, fight the good fight of faith. Say, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Now, let's stop right there. This is not talking about laying hold on heaven. We always put things off to the sweet by and by, don't we? We tend to do that, don't we, in the body of Christ? No, let me very carefully. How many of you are born again? You're on your way to heaven. And when you arrive in heaven, you don't got to lay hold on heaven. Heaven going to lay hold on you. Yeah. No, there are things God wants us to lay hold on before we ever get to heaven. Right. Did you know that Jesus said that heaven and earth shall pass away? My words shall not pass away. So God's words are eternal. And Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. There's, a, there's an eternal life in the words of God. God's words are eternal, and his words contain his life, the Zoe life of God. Amen. Amen. So you grab hold, you lay hold of what you heard this morning with your faith. 
whereunto thou, thou art also called and hast professed a good profession, say a good profession, before many witnesses. Ah, I'm going to read that to you from the Amplified Bible. Listen to this. It's really clear in the Amplified Bible. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of the eternal life to which you were summoned and for which you confessed the good confession of faith before many witnesses. Hang on to your confession of faith. Hang on to your confession of faith in God's word. Amen. Hold fast your confession of faith in what God said to you this morning, in what God spoke to your spirit. Don't let go of it because you're in line, all of you are, for a swift and sudden turnaround. In Jesus' name, and I'm done. Praise God. God bless you. Amen.